D capability. Uh, we've got some enhancements in solver and, uh, and real-time solver. We've got a number of other miscellaneous enhancements and some drill improvements that I'm going to discuss. And then we'll finish up by talking about platform support. Okay, so Adams and VTD extensions. In uh, 2018.1, we introduced our Adams to VTD capability. VTD stands for Virtual Test Drive, and this comes from a, uh, a company called VRES, which we MSC acquired a few years back. So our VRES group now within MSC, uh, and they produce the Virtual Test Drive product, and that's used for the development and testing of advanced driver assistance and active safety, safety systems. And um, again, starting with 2018.1, we've offered the ability to generate a full vehicle model from Adam's car that can be used as a plant in the VTD simulation environment. So essentially, Adam's physics driving the vehicle within the VTD environment. Now, in this release, we've added some nice extensions for that here in 2019.2. We're able to support more than four wheels now. Uh, we're able to, uh, which is good, right, for heavy vehicles, for example. Uh, and uh, other things with multiple axles, dual wheels, these kinds of uh, these kinds of vehicles. We're also able now to say in Atoms before we export the Atoms model for use in VTD, we can now specify additional input signals. So standardly, we're always um, always uh, providing um, uh, we're always being provided by, from VTD, the Adams model that is, is being provided from VTD, steering, throttle, brake, and gear, but we can uh, uh, assign other input signals. Of course, those would have to be supported on the VTD model, uh, but we can assign other input signals for the Adams model to consume from the VTD environment. And the flip side is true. We can provide more than the signals we standardly uh, uh, provide from the Adams vehicle. So that's vehicle body states and wheel states. That's what we're always providing. But we could also say, hey, we will provide other signals uh, to the VTD vehicle model from the Adams uh, from the Adams plant that is uh, representing the physics for that model. And then lastly, we can make more parts accessible within VTD. ETD than standardly. So in addition to the main chassis part of the vehicle, uh, which is always there by default, other parts can be selected and visualized in VTD. And so that's useful if there's relative motions between vehicle parts. If you're thinking limited to a four-wheel car, a sedan, well, you know, it's, it's more or less one, uh, uh, one, one thing that we're uh, showing the motion on that, the body of that vehicle. But here, uh, you may say, well, I've got a, a heavy truck, right? And I want to see the tractor and trailer move differently. I may even want to see portions of the cab move differently relative to the tractor. So there are, um, uh, this feature now enables that, uh, uh, now enables that, kind of, uh, that kind of visualization. And so, um, you know, again, as you can maybe tell from the types of things we're talking about, though this is really focused on uh, heavy vehicle modeling particularly these big, uh, big trucks and such uh, that would uh, take advantage of these kinds of extensions. Uh, in fact, they, uh, you know, for a couple of uh, a couple of scenarios that uh, we're showing here, some animations now uh, from the VTD side, uh, showing the Adam stuff on the other side, but this heavy, this big red uh, heavy vehicle here, a uh, big heavy truck is uh, uh, driven by Adam's physics, and then what we're looking at is in the VTD environment. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, let's take a look at that same scenario here again. Now we've got some visualization on the sensors that are in VTD, uh, showing us how the sensors are, uh, are are looking for obstacles. In this case, this white car that came in very quickly. And you could notice there when we run that. Maybe we take a look at it one more time. You can notice there uh, we're now getting relative motions. Uh, you can see between the uh, the cab uh, and the uh, uh, the rest of the um, rest of the tractor and also to some extent the trailer. This next event will show a little more um, the relative motion between trailer and, and the uh, and, and the tractor in this case. So here the uh, heavy vehicle the truck is making a change lane change out uh, two lanes out here now out in its far left lane and then keep an eye on the white car here coming up again uh, coming up very fast in the right lane and whoops we decide we don't want to go all the way across both lanes there and so that kind of relative motion between the trailer and the tractor wouldn't be possible to uh, visualize uh, 
um, from the Adams plant in uh, previous releases, but is now here in this release. And here's another look at the event uh, with some different visualization applied in VTD in virtual test drive, uh, showing uh, the types of uh, objects that are getting picked up by the uh, picked up by the sensors as the uh, as the vehicle's driving along. And now we're getting ready. Here comes the white car again, and ooh, just miss it. <laughs> Yeah, so some very uh, very exciting stuff for heavy heavy truck manufacturers here uh, that are you know, using Adams plants as uh, essentially the physics behind the vehicle model in VTD. So very powerful, uh, very powerful for you know Adams car users um, that are also uh, VTD users. Okay, moving along to Adams Solver and Adams Real Time. Uh, there's been some uh, a couple of enhancements here that are worth noting in both Solver and Adams Real Time. Within Adams Solver, uh, this release we've added a new option um, uh, in the dynamics uh, the dynamic solver in uh, with regards to the corrector. So there's now a new corrector option called uh, Original Content, and this option instructs Adams Solver to remain using the original corrector throughout the simulation, no matter what. Uh, and it works with any integrator choice, and it's got an ACF and ADM uh, language extension there as well. The integrator statement, the integrator command now has a, actually the corrector argument on the integrator statement and the integrator command uh, has a, another option now, or ridge underscore constant. Uh, and you can pick original constant here as shown here right in the Adams view uh, solver settings dialog as well. Um, so this is, I think, isn't that what the original corrector was doing before? But actually, it's not. The original, if you select original as opposed to original constant, um, what uh, Adam Solver uh, will do is it starts using the original corrector, but when a certain amount of difficulty with convergence is encountered, the Adam Solver will automatically switch to the modified corrector, which has a little bit looser criteria for allowing it to proceed and maybe helps get you through some some hairier spots, but with limited accuracy. So some folks um, have said, well, you know, we uh, we, we found that uh, if, if we have to resort to modify corrector, we don't like the results anyhow. So we'd, rather, we'd really prefer that we have an option where we can keep original corrector on. If it doesn't converge, then we know there's something we've got to do with our model. Also, uh, in Adam Solve, uh, we have added the capability uh, to report uh, simulation time and error messaging. So in previous releases of Adam Solver, there's been a, a number of error messages that did not report the simulation time at which they occurred. So you could really only sort of guesstimate it, you know, unless you had debug on or something like that. You could really only estimate where you were based on the broad simulation time interval that's reported on the console or in the message file. You couldn't really uh, couldn't really tell exactly what time this thing occurred very easily. So starting with Adams 2019.2 here, those such error messages will now include the exact simulation time at which they occurred. And then with regards to Adams Real-Time, uh, the Adams Real-Time solver, we've made some improvements there uh, on models, Adams car models that we run in Adams Real-Time here within, uh, within MSC in our test suites, we've noticed uh, roughly a 10% speed up observed. Um, of course, your mileage may vary with your models and your environments and such, but uh, generally the baseline models that we test here for Adam's real time, we're seeing again this 10% uh, speed up. Okay, moving on to a few other enhancements. Uh, the Adams Car FMI interface menu has been added. Uh, this basically consolidates three actions that we've done that have been in a couple other menus within Adams Car. Uh, more or less, the FMI stands for Functional Mockup Interface that we've uh, supported for a number of years now. Uh, is our means to do uh, three things within Adams Car. One, that export to VTD that we were just showing, and uh, uh, with regards to uh, uh, with regards to sending the Adams Plant for VTD. Uh, so there's an option to do that. And so when we select export to VTD here, this dialog uh, is specific to doing those things. So that's up, you know, uh, it has some defaults for the signals like I was talking about, steering, throttle, brake, gear coming in, and wheel states and chassis states going out. So you don't have to set up some of those things. And then there's some of the other advanced options on here that we, we showed in the previous, uh, the previous segment with regards to some of the nice new things you can do with Adams as a plant in VTD. 
Then we also have real-time analysis. This has, again, been here for a while, nothing new in this release with it, just more tightly organized here. Uh, but this is another case where we're using uh, functional mock-up units, uh, as Adam's real-time users will know. Uh, and so again, this dialog is slightly also uh, uh, you know, slightly different from the standard Adams controls uh, FMI um, and FM, FMU export dialog. Uh, so this one has a few different uh, things set for it automatically, removes a few things uh, because we uh, we already know we're doing some things with Adams real time, so no need to prompt folks for that, and adds a few other choices that are real time specific. And then there's still the general uh, Adams car FMU export. Uh, dialogue here as well for doing general export of FMUs of Adams car models, Adams as a plant, and anything else participating in a, a functional mock with a functional mock up interface software and co simulation. So, really, just a reorganization of where these things are um, and uh, you know, a few improvements in some of these dialogues along the way. Also within the product, um, in Adams controls, we have added the direct mode option for EZ5 and MATLAB. Previously, this was only available for functional mock-up interface, again, for FMI co-simulations. Uh, now we're able to do, use this here for co-simulation and function evaluation uh, with our direct interfaces to EZ5 and MATLAB Simulink. So, this is uh, the, the advantage of the direct mode, um, same as it is when doing FMI, it's the same advantage we have here is that it's faster, it's a faster option than using TCPIP or the pipes options for communication mode. Within Adam's View, uh, the Adam's ViewFlex um, dialog has a new option here to allow us to do strain recovery as well. So this is, you know, again, Adam's ViewFlex is creating a modal neutral file. Uh, the flexible body representation for us on the fly within from within Adam's view. And so uh, for the number of years that we've had this, we've uh, had the ability to do modal stress recovery on such MNFs created from Adam's view flex. Uh, we've now added the option here to, um, to allow for strain recovery. And uh, uh, also in view, just mention our uh, CAD interoperability version support is here. This is unchanged from what we've had uh, in 2019.0, um, but these are the versions. Uh, these are also listed in the release guide, all the versions of the, the various um, CAD formats uh, that we can import. Okay, moving on, we do have a, a few enhancements in the Adams Drill product as well. Uh, within Adams Drill, we've made uh, some changes, uh, some additional flexibility, configurability, I should say, with uh, Adam's results content. Uh, Adam's drill users can suppress certain request types, uh, things that maybe aren't uh, specific request channels, but uh, request uh, components that appear in multiple areas or are specific to a certain, uh, certain component, and as well as the ability to spe uh, suppress specific output components themselves. Uh, and so this is just done by a one-time configuration in, a, in the A-Drill configuration file. So that's a nice convenience. Um, you know, drill users uh, especially uh, are, you know, making very large results files. So uh, it's, it's good to uh, try to trim down some of these things uh, for folks that are uh, have a specific pattern of uh, results consumption. In Adam's drill in the pre-processing world, there's been a number of functional enhancements made, uh, some new methods for inputting surface drilling parameters and simulation output rate, uh, some more checking uh, for error, more automated error checking before submitting jobs, um, and some other niceties in the interface, uh, some more defaults and uh, some multi release capability where we didn't have it before. Also, some uh, end user can convenience uh, as an interface with regards to uh, naming and labeling improvements and things that make things a bit more intuitive for drilling engineers. Okay, and we'll wrap it up with platform support. Um, no big news here, this release either. Uh, we just had Adams 2019.0 release, uh, GA release back in March uh, or April time frame. And uh, so we'll now, uh, 2019.2, we're now changing the platform support here in uh, here in June. Um, I should also mention that uh, Adams 2019.2, the final release is not out available just yet, but we're hoping to wrap that up late next week. Uh, so it'll be coming out very, uh, very, very soon. And again, no, uh, no platform support changes with 2019.2 relative to the 2019.0 release. 
we will expect some platform changes uh, with a release at the end of this year or in the early next year. Or Adams 2020 release to be the next release that uh, that we've got in the plan.